Hello and welcome to another tutorial on finite element methods, where today we are going to look at uh, proper cantilever beam. And uh, for those who have been following us uh, on our lecture series, Introduction to Finite Element Method, on lesson number five, there was a practice uh, exercise question, uh, which is as given below. So this is the case that we are going to solve. And uh, if you remember well, we provide the solution. You are required to get the shear force and bearing moment diagram, and I provided this as a typical solution to this. Huh? So I'm assuming that now you have done your practice, so it's kind of time to check where you gone uh, wrong or right, but I hope that this should be a simple question. Let's dive in. Uh, if you have not subscribed to this channel, it's a time to click that uh, subscribe button there and let's uh, keep rolling on this uh, platform. The first thing always is to come up with the elemental stiffness matrices and as usual, you look at how many elements do we have. So these are already numbered for you. We have node 1, we have node 2, we have node 3. So basically this would be element 1, element 2 and as you can see they are oriented in the same uh, coordinate system. So there will be no issue of transformation. This is a basic, a simple exercise. And that's why I came directly to showing you the, the typical stiffness matrix for a beam element is as given here. So the same case, the element will have the same. So the, the part here is now, or the, the check here is to see how you can combine the two, which should be a straightforward uh, exercise for you. K1 and K2 is the same. Both the both elements, they have the same material properties and both geometry are the same. Combination, of course, you need to see the common node is uh, node two. So this means that uh, all near those quantities here, which are seated in D2, theta 2. So you see here, only those quantities, of course, here we know this is D1, 3, 1, then this would be D2, Y, of course, uh, theta 2. So the quantity, this one, D2, theta 2, and this one, D2, theta 2, are the ones that uh, are shared in the shared node. So when you do this by position, you are able to combine the both stiffness matrices that you come up with this. Again, you said the stiffness matrix is symmetrical. So this means that you could uh, simplify your work. And uh, now we move to the global finite element function, F is equal to K times uh, the delta. So K, the global is this one. So you just need to include the displacement vector and the apply loads vector. So that now you're able to come up with the equilibrium equation, which we also call the finite element equation as given here. So we have just introduced uh, this uh, the, the vector component for nodal degrees of freedom delta. Then this is k, and then for the externally applied uh, or for the for the nodal forces or nodal applied loads, we have the force vector, and that's our finite element equation. The next step from this stage, we know we need the boundary condition and also the applied loads so that you can be able to solve this equation and solve this equation because you can see the equation has got six six unknowns. So if we st go straight ahead and start solving this without simplifying then you may really have uh, some tedious task. So what we do, we use, uh, we look at the boundary condition and for the degrees of freedoms that have got zero values, eh, we remove the rows and the columns associated with that. So in this case, you look at the boundary condition, node one, uh, they, they are not zero because displacement can occur up and down. Eh? So V is not zero, rotation is not zero. Here in this node, because of the error support, rotation is not zero because we expect some kind of a displacement like this. But when you come here because of the x density, here there is no rotation. Three at the three is equal to zero. Then here, of course, we have vertical displacement, there is nothing. So d2y is equal to zero, okay? When you look at this, uh, and uh, of course, because of this applied the load here on this node, eh? node one, of course, it'll be for the half down one displacement. What else do we know? Of course, uh, even here, uh, displacement again, upward D3X is equal to zero. So the boundary condition and the load, we know uh, the load here, F1, Y is equal to negative P. So with that known, these are the ones that we apply so that we can have uh, a reduced case. We apply the load and boundary condition. D2Y is equal to zero, D3 and the theta 3 is equal to zero. Then F1Y is known is negative P. And uh, again, if you look at this uh, equation, our figures here, there is no applied uh, uh, moment or load in this node or in this node. Okay? I mean, on this node, one and two. Of course, here we expect some reaction eh? because this head is fixed, fixed moment. Oh, right. So we can just take the whatever is associated with D2y, we remove that row, and uh, theta 3, we remove that row, and the same associated column, that one, this one, and also T3y. If you, are, if you are left with the, these quantities, you are reduced the equation it will be something of this nature. So this is a reduced equation. And you can see now here you only have three unknowns. So you can go straight ahead and solve this one simply by row reduction. Because again, you see, uh, once we apply the known load condition from this head, we are able to, to obtain these are zeros. Eh? So we can uh, use like the last equation because you already have this zero. 
then we make maybe like 32 of course 32 is their subject like that so these are simple uh, simultaneous equations which you can uh, solve easily to obtain uh, d1y or the particle displacement at the first node which is downward because of the negative sign negative 7 pl cubed over 12 so theta 1 the rotation is 3 quarter pl squared over ei and theta 2 the rotation node 2 is as shown there next we need to get the forces the global for our structure at each of the nodes eh? so f1y f2y f3y and those as well as the movement some of them of course we know that uh, there's no movement in node one no movement to develop in node two no uh there is a fixed moment in node three so we go back to our equation that we had we substitute back the values which are known of course, already we have calculated what uh the, this, remember this is the displacement the uh, component uh, factor and this is the force factor so like f1 y we already know is negative p so this one here you replace there then m1 we know is zero so once you replace that you can be able to solve and also on this side you have replaced the number of degrees of freedom which are known have been evaluated so now we can be able to take like one uh, equation one you solve for f1 y like so on and so forth so solving this now you just uh, get the answers as f1 y is given m1 it was known f2 y is like that and so on and so forth so, and the last part now of this problem that we had here was to, to sketch the bedding moments diagram and the shear force diagram and as you can see once you know these values eh, now you can represent them it's just representing the answers that you have here graphically like just looking at this you start with how are these forces for nodal forces so we have a nodal force here downward okay this is p because the nodal force of course will guide you in the shear force direction so again we calculated the reaction uh, f2 uh, is, is this one this is 5 over 2 p and uh here we know we have uh, is this is this was positive so that's why it's upward and then uh, on this fixed edge we have f3 y is negative so negative 3 over 2 okay and then of course there are moments half pl and we know the notation is that positive counterclockwise so those are the node of forces and moments on the beam so how will the shear force be like so the shear force diagram will be this is negative we start on this end node one uh, node one node two and this point node three so negative downwards like that and there is no UDL applied, so we remain constant. So this is negative P. This is our B. Then at this point, a reaction force applies. So 5 over 2P. 5 over 2 is 1 and 3 over 2. 1, 3 over 2. So we go the full length P. Then we go 3 over 2P. To cover 5 over 2. So at this point, it will be 3 over 2P. Positive. And again, now there are no there is no load applied here. Either you yell or point load, so we, it's main constant. Until where you have a reaction, downward here of 3 over 2 p so this is positive this is negative so this is the shear force diagram remember you have to show the values here at this point is 3 over 2 p so this is minus p of course here is minus p just that and of course the direction l and all that then how about the bedding moment we have our beam there and uh, we start the moment at node 1 here is given us zero the moment at node 2 is zero Right, and the moment at node three is a half e l on this direction. So if you look at this, eh, we are saying the externally applied uh, moment on this node is m two is zero, and this is zero. And here we have half p l positive. The, the best thing to sketch this is that you do it below. I mean, consecutively. That's why we started with the node of forces, shear force, bedding moment diagram. Okay, this is our beam. For the bedding moment, we don't like this. Here we have a force which is applied downward. Okay, and here there's a fixed head so it's a moment that you develop. Because of the rotor support, externally, the moment will be equal to zero. But then, if this is a positive moment here, because we have a half PL, so it's positive, and then here the force was acting downwards. Eh? So it means there's a way the, the moment, the, the bedding moment diagram is changing like that to be able to to behave like that okay to be able to be to to balance counterbalance so to get this eh, we can take this first element one two we calculate the internal nodal forces and the bedding moment and then we take the element two three we see the internal bedding moment and the internal uh, forces and to do this you just come and uh, take the first uh, finite element uh, uh, stiffness matrix right 
So the stiffness matrix that we had at the beginning, this one here, if you take uh, this stiffness matrix, so it means we can generate the elemental uh, finite element equation, right? On this end, eh, this is K, so ignore that K there. So K, I need to introduce the nodal displacement, which will be, uh, of course, D1Y, uh, D1, D2Y, V, uh, V, V, two or five two. Then the same with this two, three. I can be able to create, I equate to uh, F. So this will be small. You can use the hat there to say it's elemental or a prime there. So this will be F1Y, uh, M1, then F2Y, M2. So why are we doing like this? Because we, when you look at this, when we look at uh, our answers here, the moment that one is zero, the moment that two is zero, the moment that three is positive, half the end. So the positive moment is counter clockwise. So meaning, representative is half the end there, yeah, okay? In our bedding moment diagram, upward, yeah, in the counter clockwise direction. Yeah. So, and here we know there was a force applied down one. So it means that the, the, the moment diagram here started somewhere, oh, I mean, because of this load, eh, there was a point that it was going down one. Then because of the reaction here, the very moment now, the diagram comes up until it's positive on this side. So we are doing by, uh, we, are, we are getting this shape by, by inference, looking at, the, at the, the, the loading that we had, the shear force that we created, and now this value, why, how, and do we have it as zero? Okay. So in this case now, I said that we just need to get the uh, elemental stiffness matrix for this so that you can calculate the internal member forces. So the internal nodal forces, the same case for here. So when you do like that, you're going to get for element one. So F1Y, uh, M1, F2Y, M2, and remember we use flying to represent that this is for the element, okay, is equals to EI of L cubed into bracket, then you put all that 12 minus 6L, 6L blah 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 like that, then this side you have D1Y which is equals to this value, so you're going to put that value over there, minus 7PL cubed of a 12 EI, beta 1 or phi 1, which is this one, so you bring the 1 there. Then uh, uh, F2, which here we know is, was equal to 0, I mean the uh, D2 upward, there's no vertical displacement, and uh, with the 2 is this, you put it here. So with that, you are able to calculate F1Y, M1, F2Y, M2. And if you do this, you are going to get F1Y, if you solve this equation, will be equal to minus P. So the internal member force, eh, the, the internal node of force uh, corresponds to the externally applied force at this node 1. Now at node 2, we obtain FM1 uh, prime is equal to 0. That is after solving this equation for the first element. And then we get M2 on this node is equal to minus PL. And uh, if you do the same for this element 2, you are going to get, because we are interested in M2, you are going to get M2 as positive PL. And that's why when we look at globally, uh, I mean at a global scale, there was a cancellation of moment. That's why we had M2 being zero. But when we come at the elemental level, M2 is PL. And M2 from the element one is negative. So that's why there's a cancellation. And with that, our sketch becomes something like this. You go all the way. Uh, first, the, the, the free body diagram for the first element, you're going to have a load P is applied there. And then we have uh, a load P. This is negative P, positive P. Then you have a negative moment, PL. So the same case for two, you have a positive moment, uh, PL. And uh, if you can look carefully here, you're going to have it as a uh, three of a two P as a vertical force. So that now it can bring the addition of the five over two that you get here. And so on and so forth. Of course, in this fixed head here, because no sharing of the nodes, this will be the same quantity as the one that was obtained for M3. So our overall bedding moment diagram for the this structure is something like 
this is the node 2 here that's where you have 1 this way you have 3 with that you just have so this will be of course 0 moment there is 0 this is a bedding mono diagram this will be here over 2 this will be minus 2L minus 2L this is negative. So this is negative. This is positive. Sometimes we hard there. That's a very normal diagram. So it's always good that why uh, you engineers you reason out. You look at you don't just get ghost. If you try to plot this curve, I mean the bedding moment m20, m10, and m3 is half pn. I expect you might get something like this. Zero, zero. Then where does it shoot to? Uh, half PL. So I don't know how your bedding movement diagram would look like. That's why you need to look at how are these loads applied. And usually the procedure is you plot the uh, load after you have done your analysis. You plot the load, how the load are applied. So uh, load application diagram or load distribution diagram. Then you plot the shear force diagram. Then the bedding moment comes last because it will help you to visualize and to figure out and that's why i always say before we go to computers then we need to we need to to to, to be able to understand the results so that the result that you're going to get from analysis any software whatever trash you give a team it will give you uh, trash out garbage in garbage out but if you can understand sometimes if you make a small error somewhere and you do not know during the the input stage the result that you're going to get you might start questioning ah is this realistic or what is happening if it's at the bar what is happening all right without much talking that's the end of my story for today again thank you for your patronage let's continue growing together continue subscribing and sharing with your friend continue leaving your comments if you have any question in this video uh, you can leave it in the comment section and if this video helps you give it a thumbs up thumbs up is a like like it so that it gets recommended to more people so until the next episode bye bye for now god bless you